Hey everyone, KYT here. Hope everyone is having a good start of the week. The market has been green on Monday and today. So, so I think so, your portfolio should be pretty green. So for this quick video, I wanna go through some, do some Q&A and I wanna thank people who left some comments in the post I made on YouTube. So let's let's get head over there right now. So I asked anything you guys would like my opinion or take on and a few of you uh, have, have left some comments and uh, I'm gonna try to bundle up topics that make sense. I will go answer all of them eventually, but for this video, I'm gonna go through ones that I can go through that make sense to be answered together. So this one uh, from Monica, I would also like to understand why you have Wealthsimple as well as Quest Trade. How much does Wealthsimple cost you if you were to sell the investments today? So let's head over to Quest Trade. Now that we're inside my Quest Trade, I do have to mention that I recommend signing up, especially now with the link in the description below so that we can both get $50 for free if you haven't started an account anywhere or if you haven't started a Quest Trade account yet. So the reason why I have a Quest Trade account versus just having Wealthsimple is first of all, I started with Quest Trade. I didn't hear about Wealthsimple and I love Wealthsimple's user, the, the UI, but they have some accounts that are only available in Quest Trade. So for now, a self-directed RESP that where you can buy your own ETFs, that's only available on uh, Quest Trade. On Wealthsimple, it's a managed RESP. And uh, as far as I know, unless they've updated it recently, the first home savings account, self-directed, only available on Quest Trade. For now, I think you can only go and get on the waiting list on Wealthsimple. So unfortunately, even though some of us are OCD in the way, in terms of wanting to keep everything in one account, there are benefits to having accounts in different places. And I, I was on the Blossom app, one person asked like, how do you manage all, uh, to balance out, like manage all these things? Of course, if you are not new to the channel, you know it's a lot easier if you're just investing in one ETF. You don't really have to balance any holdings. And uh, another big thing with Quest Trade is that you can actually see the buy and ask spread of a particular ETF. In Wealthsimple, you have to, as far as I remember, you have to pay an upgrade to, I believe, a premium or plus plan, whatever they call it, to be able to see that. Uh, you can see on Wealthsimple, you can see the price and you can update the price. Uh, on Quest Trade, if you go to XQT, you can see the bid and the ask, which leads to uh, your second question, Monica, that what happens, how much does it cost you if you were to sell the investments today? So for ETFs on Wealthsimple, it's uh, free. Quest Trade, there is a small fee, but it's like up to a maximum of uh, $5, I believe. I'm actually going to check that right now. So I'm on the Quest Trade ETF fees here. If I were to sell it all in one shot, it would cost me roughly $10, $9.95 to be exact. And on Wealthsimple is free. But based on your question, it's not clear if you're asking me about the selling fees or you're curious about like how the liquidating process, like how much money, how it works. And it comes down to the bid and ask, going back to the bid and ask thing for Quest Trade. So I do recommend reading up quickly about this because it is important, but I'll try to quickly explain it. A bid and ask is, I, I just imagine you're going to a market, there's a bunch of people that are willing to buy shares of your ETF and there's a bunch of people that are willing to, to sell that ETF. And the bid price is the highest price someone's willing to pay for a particular ETF and the ask is, it doesn't have to be an ETF, it could be just a share of a stock. Ask is the lowest price someone's willing to sell their ETF or share at. And bid size and ask size below, uh, on question is lots of 100, so bid size, it changes all the time because things are switching, but let's say 37 is the bid size, there's 37 times 100. That's the demand that people have set for their, let's say, you can even think of it as a buy limit. There's like, if you wanna sell, you can sell 3,700 shares at 26.29. So let's say you were to liquidate immediately. You wanna just sell it. All you care about is the, the bid price. It's all the, all the buyers, right? You don't care about people selling stuff because you're part of that group. So you focus on the bid price. And if you have a lot of shares, more shares than is shown on this bid size, the problem is you're gonna sell all those shares that people are willing to buy at that price. It's gonna be completed and then it's gonna to go to the next price and then people are gonna 
be able to buy at that price and go to the next price because if that's what happens if you want to market sell all your shares in an instant uh, that's what's going to happen because it's just going to match all the buys for a price i'm repeating myself but and then match keep matching until all the shares are filled up so like 1800 at this level 26.8 and then depending on how many shares you have over 1800 it moves on to the next and next and lower level which is why some people set a limit sell order and wait for it to sell a bit over time you're not going to get it instantly and the downside of that is maybe that etf never hits that price again which is unlikely because especially for xeqt eventually we know it's it's going to trend up but for example 26.28 and you have like a million shares let's say just to illustrate the example a bit better you have a million shares um, I can't really see because I'm far from the computer. A million shares and you limit price, and you would set it to twenty six, twenty eight, and and sell, and that would ensure that all your shares are sell sold at that price versus selling what's available in the bid size and then moving down the the price ladder. So I hope that makes sense. Now let's go back to the comments section and see. The other questions that you may have had that are related to this topic, you talked about emergency funds, a quick note about that. Me and my wife don't have any, and that's because there's a lot of things that might require instant fixes that we don't really need. So for example, if our car broke down, do we need that car instantly? Would we have time to liquidate some of our shares in, in XEQT and be able to pay it in, in two or three days? I think so. And if one of us lost our jobs, like both of us are able to support the other. And if there's any issues with the place we are in now, like a plumbing issue we need to fix immediately, we are currently renting. So a lot of the emergency fund scenarios don't apply to us. I mean, I, I think there might be one day that there's some really big giant, uh, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen expense that we need cash to pay for immediately like in the next day versus the two three days that it would take for me to sell xeqt and for the funds to reach my my bank account so i mean it, it's possible but we've been okay not doing it since i started investing so we'll see again fingers crossed it doesn't happen but you didn't mention uh if cash.to or csave would be a good option for this type of purpose and again i i'm not sure i don't think so uh especially when people think about it depends on your scenarios of when you would need this money because again if your car breaks down and you need to fix that car immediately the next day to go to work so you need that cash immediately you can't afford to sell funds in wealth simple or quest trade and then have those funds take two or three business days to hit your account. So I think for, for emergency funds, at least for me, it would be scenarios where you really need to cash immediately. But Cash.2 and CSAVE are, are great for scenarios where you don't need the cash immediately, but soon and you don't want the cash to have diminished value and you want it to be like safe, like no loss, because let's say you lose your job and then you need time to get yourself back in the job industry, you might want to save like one to three months and those would be great options, right? It, if it doesn't matter that you need to wait a few days for the cash to hit your account. And of course I've mentioned this in other videos, I also have an interactive brokers account and that's because I invest with leverage and I invest in a non-registered account. Once I've maxed all my accounts in Wealthsimple and Quest Trade. IB is the only one that offers me, out of the three, to be able to invest in leverage. Basically what that means is I have 20,000 in XEQT and IB, but I'm investing, I'm borrowing money as if I'm investing 40,000. And even with the high interest rates, it's done pretty well for me. So I'm pretty happy about that. I am up 4,000. Overall, so you can see here, 20,000 
and but I'm, my position on it is actually 40,000. So despite people thinking that, oh, people who invest in index are risk, not risk tolerant, this is actually a high risk way, a higher risk way, I would say, not high risk, higher risk way of adding some risk for higher expected returns. And uh, there we have it. And I think that does it for this video. I hope uh, I helped you out and I'm looking forward to more questions in the QA, QA, the Q&A section. See you in the next one.